my name is Stephanie Spicer and I'm a Limey. I just wanted to share with you today what a sample Reich machine treatment looks like for me. And um, just because I do it this way doesn't mean that everyone has to. I think everyone has their own kind of way of doing their Reich machine treatments. I think basically what I want to tell you is that this is not rocket science. Um, it's, it's something that you can do at home by yourself. Um, and it's not that complicated really, but it's very effective, which is awesome because we people with Lyme disease don't have a lot of options um, or the ones that we do have don't seem to work very well, but this is one that does. So um, I want to share it with you and I, I'm sorry because I, I script my videos just for the very reason that if I don't do that, I tend to ramble and they get long. So I'm going to try not to ramble. So just... Forgive me as I do an unscripted video. Um, so just a little bit about my setup. This is an MM Reich machine. I, I really don't know why these aren't more popular because they're very good little machines um, and they're very inexpensive. I have had two. Um, the first one I bought secondhand for $400 and this one I had to replace the first one because it got broken when I was moving. Um, and this one I also got secondhand for $600. So it's actually quite an afford affordable machine compared to some of the other ones. It's not the strongest machine, but it has always worked well for me. And by worked, what I mean is it always produces the Herx reaction, which means I know it's killing the bacteria. And um, overall, over time, I have noticed um, a great improvement in my health, which um, which is amazing. Sometimes it's hard to see because it's slow, but um, then you know you notice that things are going better. So I'm really grateful for being able to find out about this technology because it's helped me a lot. So um, so that's the machine. Um, this is the controller. Um, I can type. I can punch in the the numbers of the frequencies directly into this keypad which is nice because my old machine was an older model and it had dials on it, which were much more difficult to sort of tune specifically and exactly to a frequency because it was sort of like, I don't know if I'm on the right spot, you know, but this one is like, you just type in the number. So that's actually a lot better. Um, this <laughs> heavy thing is a free, uh, is a voltage converter. Um, I live in Europe and the machine was made in America and um, in Europe uh, the, the electricity that comes out of the walls is like double the voltage of the electricity that comes out of the walls in America. So I was a little bit concerned that I might break the machine if I plugged it, um, you know, just using a regular, you know, whatever, you know, uh, plug converter <laughs> into the wall. But I think now, I think it was maybe unnecessary to, you know, to buy this, but I still use it just because, just in case. So what I do is I plug the machine into the voltage converter. Like I said, probably unnecessary. Turn that on. Um, and on my old machine, there was a label that said, please have the machine on 4,000 and 40 hertz when you turn the machine on and off. Now when I got this machine, it didn't say that, but I always just still do it just to be safe because I don't know if it would break it if I didn't. So um, so I have it on 4040. And uh, first of all, turn on this little guy. And then, um, this by the way, just has a, a, a little battery in it. And then turn on the machine itself. So I'm not sure if you can hear that, but there's kind of like a sound that comes out of it and there's a little like purplish light in the plasma bulb as well. So right now it's on 4,400 frequencies. So which frequencies do I use? Um, I recently was rereading Brian Rosner's book, Lyme Disease and Reich Machines, and I was surprised that I had forgotten about this page. Um, in which he lists basically the frequencies that people with Lyme disease have found the most useful for um, treating Lyme disease. And they're all pretty low frequencies, like most of them are under a thousand hertz. And um, that kind of surprised me, but um, 
in any case, I, I intend to utilize this list, you know, um, in the future, but I'm just going to show you right now what I do on a, on a regular basis. So let's see if I can show you my computer. So I have made a list for myself, which was taken from the consolidated annotated frequency list, which is free online. I talked about it in a previous video. It's basically a list of all the frequencies that people have used for different health problems, like all kinds of different health problems. And there are some for Lyme, there's some for Bartonella, which I also have. And um, basically what I did was I went through the list, and this took me three days. I went through the entire list to put down all the Lyme frequencies, all of the, the co-infections that are included in sort of like the whole <laughs> Lyme disease world, including also um, some things that are possibly related to Lyme disease, for example, multiple sclerosis, fibromyalgia. So I took all those frequencies and I put them together in one list from the highest to the lowest. Now, somebody once sent me an article that was talking about like how you should do the frequencies. And in this article, it said you should run them from the highest frequency to the lowest frequency. Now, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure how scientifically based that article was, but I figured, you know, just in case it's true, just in case that it's useful to do that, I will do it. So I basically put those all in the list and I color coded them so that I can recognize which frequencies are associated with which issue. So as I mentioned in my last video, I kind of made a mistake with my treatment in that I tended to do a lot of frequencies per session and just run them for a very short amount of time. And I think that it is very important to run them for a sufficient amount of time to actually kill bacteria. So now I have worked up to running frequencies for three minutes each. And I also <laughs> worked myself into a place where I can actually run about, you know, 15 to 20 frequencies per session. But I would not in any ways recommend doing that if you're just starting out. Um, by the way, I can't recommend anything because I'm not a doctor. So I, you know, if you want medical advice, please go to a doctor. And if you want technical advice, there are people who can give you better advice than I can because I'm, you know, I'm not an engineer or anything like that. But um, I, I just want to say don't try this at home. If you're just starting out with Rec Machines, I would say it's a much better plan to just run one frequency and just see how you react. Um, it's also a much better way to know which frequencies are working for you. If you only run one, that's a much more scientific way of measuring what actually is happening to you. And I usually watch uh, a few episodes of The Office while I'm doing that, just keeping my eye on the clock and every three minutes I change it. Um, that's another thing I wanted to mention as well. I. When I first started using Rife Machine, I was very careful about my computer and making sure that it was in a completely different room with a few walls in between because I didn't want to hurt my computer with the Rife Machine. You know, um, I had read this book about um, EMPs and using how they can be used as weapons and I was really um, afraid that it could, you know, knock out something important in my electronics and uh, hurt my computer. but. As time went over, I got a little bit lazy and I realized like my computer is fine when even if it's right next to the Rife machine, but I mean, I, I don't know if I could say that for every Rife machine, maybe some of them would hurt a computer, I don't know. But in any case, I like it because I can just watch a couple episodes of a TV show while I'm doing this and it's not, um, not boring, um, so. Okay, so basically, um, where I am on my list right now, I just keep a marker on my list and I, right now I'm at 788. So I'm just going to punch it down. The way that this is set up, I'm not sure if you can see it from there, but um, basically it's like this is the, the ones column, the tens column, the hundreds column, the thousands column, the ten thousands column. And these higher ones are sort of like there's a red dot there, so meaning like the, the machine doesn't go that high. Also the very lowest one and the point one does, has a red dot as well because I can't use those either. So um, basically I'll take, I'll take this down from 4,040 
to 788. So that means I'll go down, down, down. I don't know if you can hear the difference in the, the frequency tone of the computer. Um, so 700 and, and then I go to the next column. So this column, the thousands column now says zero, the hundreds column now says seven. Now I, I'm adjusting the next two columns to be eight and eight. So now it says 788. So I'm going to leave that for three minutes, just taking a look at the clock here. All right. So um, on my list, this frequency is marked in green and red. So I'm just going to scroll down to my key at the bottom. And the green means that this, uh, that this I found it on the Epstein-Barr virus part of the CAFL. So, and the red one uh, is for ALS, so Lou Gehrig's disease, which is also something that people believe may have some connection to Lyme disease. I'll probably talk about that in uh, an upcoming video, but um, anyways, I put those on my list even though I don't necessarily have those diseases, but since they are related to Lyme disease or possibly are, I um, have put them on my list. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention about the CAFL is that um, there are certain frequencies that are marked down as being for eggs and hatchlings of Lyme disease. So there's like a, a series for Lyme disease and then there's one that's, that's called eggs and hatchlings. Now, <laughs> um, Borrelia burgdorferi do not lay eggs and they don't hatch. Um, so I don't know who came up with that terminology, but it is very dubious um, scientifically. I don't know why or how that got on the list. But the thing is, um, the way that, that Borrelia often replicate is that they basically, they break off pieces of themselves, which are called blebs. So I don't know if that's what this is in reference to. In any case, the frequencies seem to work, but just the, the terminology is, weird and unscientific so I just wanted to call that out because I don't think that we should continue using these kind of terminologies that are really not applicable um, they're confusing to people and it's not based in science so I think that um, you know I just I just wanted to call attention to that to let you know that this is you know the, the frequencies are fine but I don't know why they were listed that way because it's really not appropriate Okay, so I've been about two minutes on this frequency. Let me scroll back to my point in the list where I was. By the way, this list is like, I don't know, seven pages long. Um, so it takes me like, I don't know, a year to get through these frequencies. And um, it's maybe not the best way to do it or to start out at least. If you're just starting out, I would say, you know, use something like this list in Brian Reznor's book and just try one frequency at a time and see how that goes for you. Okay, it's been three minutes. So the next frequency is 787. So just one hertz down from the last one. So I just need to push this button one time to change the eight to a seven. So, and then I'm gonna leave that to run for three more minutes. One other thing I wanted to mention as well was that if you run a frequency, it's good to run the ones above and below it as well, just, and to overlap, okay? So like the, the frequency that you end on, if you're running more than one frequency per session, you should run it again at the beginning of your next treatment before you go farther down the list, just to make sure that you're covering enough um, area, sort of, because these are very small increments of measure. Some people ask, do you feel something while you're doing the treatment? And I don't. I have never felt anything when I, while doing a Reich machine treatment. Um, I just, you know, I can hear it, but I can't feel anything. Um, however, it, that is different for different people. I, one time I allowed a friend to use my machine, um, who also had Lyme, and he had, he said, <laughs> Like I didn't even stay in the room with him. I just showed him how to do it and I left the room so that it wouldn't affect my treatment plan. But he came out of there and he was just like, oh man, that was 
awful. He said, like, I could just feel the electricity going through my body. And I was like, really? Like, that has never happened to me before. And he actually felt so sick that he couldn't go home for a couple of hours. So he just kind of took it easy. He took some activated charcoal. Um, we watched a movie and then he went home. But uh, I think it scared him from ever trying it again. Um, but I just would like to encourage you, like, don't be turned off by Herc's reactions. There's a big difference between being sick from a Herc rea Herc's reaction and being sick from Lyme disease. It's actually an opposite problem, even though you feel the same. You might feel the same with a Herx reaction as you feel with Lyme, when you have regular Lyme symptoms. But the difference is that when you have a Herx, you're moving towards healing. And when you have a bad bout of illness and you're sick from the Lyme, you're moving deeper into the illness. So the, the disease in that case is gaining ground. Whereas when you have a Herx reaction, the disease has lost ground and the healing has gained ground. So um, another thing that has really kind of surprised me sometimes is that people say like, you know, I've tried Rife machines, but I haven't noticed any improvement. But <laughs> I'm just wondering what, what does that mean? I haven't seen any improvement. Does that mean that you just still feel sick? Or are you not differentiating between feeling sick from a Herx, which actually means that it is working and that you are getting better, even though it doesn't feel pleasant at the time? Or does it mean that you didn't have any Herx? Because in that case, maybe you don't have Lyme, maybe you have a different problem. So I think that's important to, um, to know the difference between those two things. So anyway, I'm not going to keep you watching the whole time that I'm doing this treatment, just because it's going to take a while. But I hope that this maybe has um, clarified some things. I hope that maybe it has given some courage if you have felt a little bit apprehensive about doing something technical. It's not really that complicated. Um, I'm sure, you know, some other machines are more complicated than the one I have, which was actually one reason why I really like this machine because it's so easy to use. Um, there are machines that you can get that basically you just program them and they run a series of frequencies frequencies for you. Um, there are other ones that you can just basically put the, the name of a disease in it, and it already has a program to run for a sweep through different frequencies for that particular problem. But um, I kind of like this. I like that I can sort of try different things myself. Um, without sort of being just tied to a particular program. I think that's pretty much all that I have to share about this because it's really, like I said, not that complicated. I just sit here and I just um, do the treatment. Um, I usually do it before bed just because it makes me tired um, and just to, you know, have, let my body have the rest that it needs um, after the treatment itself. I guess I'll see you again next time and until then, keep on fighting, Limeys.